Welcome back to a new video guys where today we're going to talk about exactly what you just witnessed there and it's going to be a video focused on putting speed. So um, we're only doing a six hole vlog because obviously we are going to prioritize putting which is going to be the topic of the video so we don't really need to play many holes but um, the plan for today is to try to get every putt past the hole which obviously is not what you just saw happen. Um, but yeah, we'll talk more about it as we get along. So let's get started. So ideally what people always say is that you should have foot past pace which basically means you should putt the ball a foot past the hole if you miss it um, or that's the pace that you need to putt it at but I think generally as long as you go past the hole I mean one foot two foot as long as it's basically a tap in and you don't have to think too much about it then that's a good pace um, obviously this means past the hole and not short of the hole because you anything more than like two foot as I would say if you're having a three footer you, you kind of have to start like marking it and think about it so i wouldn't be super strict and say like foot pass pace but anywhere where you would still consider like okay i can go and finish the next putt uh, and not have to think too much about it that's probably a good pace So first I'm just taking you through this um, six holes with me and after this I will show you guys some drills after the round that you can do to improve your pace as well. So yeah, just be patient, that will come later. <laughs> I probably haven't been giving myself the longest part to be able to show you guys putting speed but it's all right it's just we'll just work on the game now and then we can work on putting speed later but it's good to be sticking it close anyway so that's always a bonus
I think a lot of people get scared um, of situations like that where you know you're putting for birdie and then it's downhill and you want to get it past the hole but then in your head you're kind of be like don't be too aggressive because you know that you at worst to worst want to walk away for par and want to give yourself a harder um, second part coming back which is most definitely true but I think that um, you just have to be more cautious of your lie situation and stuff like that I think for that putt it was downhill down grain that's why it was much faster than the other putts that I've had so paying attention to that will give you more freedom to be like okay this is going to be a fast putt and this is how far or how fast I need to putt it for this putt and therefore still be able to putt it past the pin at a good pace and still give it a good roll without giving yourself a you know nail biting putt coming back for par <laughs> Okay, so I don't have my mic today, but um, basically that's two important things that I think you need to be able to do if you want to have better speed control around the greens. So the first thing is you're going to have to putt. You're going to have to practice putting it at that pace. You're going to have to practice putting it um, a foot, foot pass pace or also, like I said, just whatever you consider like a tapping pace. And it's going to be you're gonna have to know what speed you're putting on. So it's good reference if you know, like for instance, this practice putting green is maybe a nine and on the course is a 10. So then you're gonna be able to gauge, have a basis of what a nine putting green feels like and what pace you need to hit it at to get it foot pass. So I'm just gonna do a very simple drill or I'm gonna do is put some tees down and just get a good feel of putting it at a foot pass pace. Okay, so the first thing I said we're gonna do is we're gonna set up a drill and we're just gonna be using tees and two holes. So these two holes are set up perfectly that I'm going to be able to have one uphill putt and one downhill putt. Like I said, it's not a science. I'm just putting the tees where I feel like I would be comfortable to just finish up the putt, almost like a tap-in distance for me. So like I said, it can be whatever your distance. If you feel like a two-footer is too long, you might just leave it to a one-footer. But that's obviously going to make this drill more difficult. After you set up the two putts, all you're going to have to do is putt. So like I said, what we need to do is establish a good feel and the only way to do that to improve our feel is to keep putting. So as you can see in the first part here, after putting the hole on the golf course, this practice screen seems to be a bit slower. So my putt came up pretty short. So I'm probably going to have to do this a few times just to be able to establish a good feel of the speed on these greens here. This is something great, something easy that you can do, especially before your rounds. Again, it would be good if you knew the speed of the greens, especially of the putting green and of the actual course green, just so that you're able to have a good understanding of what certain speeds feel like. And so that in the future, if you're able to establish a good baseline for what a nine green speed, for instance, feels like, if you do not have time to do this on the putting green before you go out for your round, you're able to use that previous baseline that you've already had to establish a general feel for what the speed on the golf course is gonna be like for that day. So again, there's nothing fancy, nothing amazing about this drill. All you're going to have to do is keep putting, putting in the work, and you're going to start seeing the results. Also, another important thing to note is that you don't necessarily need to putt to holes. In fact, if you only want to judge the speed, you can actually just putt straight to tees. But I still like to make it a drill where I'm still trying to make the putt, so that's why I prefer putting to golf holes. However, if you probably want to work on your speed, it's actually much better to just putt to tees because sometimes the hole can definitely get in the way of the ball 
rolling too far so if you just want to get a good idea of what a good paste is going to be like definitely just part to tease or a phantom hole Another thing that I find and I usually notice with myself is that it's much easier for me to gauge foot pass pace on uphill parts compared to downhill parts. I think a main reason for this is that when you're putting downhill, you never really want to feel like you're hitting the putt too hard because generally you always feel like you need to putt it softer. So it's a bit difficult to get in that mindset of putting it past the hole and still having to hit the putt, especially when you're putting downhill. So generally for me, I find that it is much easier to putt it past the hole on an uphill putt than on a downhill putt. Let me know if this is something that you relate to or if this is just a personal experience for me and something that I generally find in myself and in my own game. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Do you find it easier to putt it past the hole on uphill putts or downhill putts? Alright, so now that we've established a drill that we can easily do to improve our pacing, what we're going to talk about is something technique-wise. So over here, we have about a 45-footer, so it's a pretty long putt. And the main thing that I want to be able to see people do is to still feel and look smooth. So as you can see here, that's a smooth stroke. What we don't want to see is this, where you have a short backswing and a very accelerated long follow-through. So a lot of people, when they try to putt longer putts, they don't take long enough of a backswing. And what then happens is your body knows that it's not going to get to the hole, so it accelerates on the way down, making you have a very long follow through instead. So why this is not good for putting and putting tempo is that you're basing it a lot on your acceleration. So if you accelerate faster on one putt than the other putt, obviously the ball is going to go further. So it makes it harder for you to establish a general feel when you're just accelerating through the ball. Don't get this mistaken, when you're putting long putts, you're always going to have some kind of acceleration through the ball, through the putter face. However, if you take a long enough backstroke, then you're going to be able to use the general momentum that your putting stroke has to be able to get the ball further without having to personally feel like you're going to have to whack at the ball. So this is one of the biggest things when it comes to technique that I want everybody to pay attention to is that we don't want to have too short of a backswing especially when we're having long putts. Having a long enough backswing is going to give us the right momentum that we're going to feel like we don't have to put that much effort into it but somehow the ball is still going to get to the hole. In fact, we're going to be able to get to the hole more consistently, easier and with a better feel. So I think this is the most important thing technique-wise. Just make sure if you're able to catch yourself on video because a lot of people don't feel it. So when you're able to see how short or how long your backswing is, I think a lot of people will be surprised by how short of a backswing they take even for a long putt such as a 60-foot putt. And they are wondering why they either blast it by or they don't get it to the hole. So definitely try to catch yourself on camera, pay attention to this and make sure that you have a long enough backswing for the length of the putt that you're going to make. So another important thing that I wanted to show here is that all four parts that I've just hit are within a good tap-in zone. However, the only parts that had the opportunity to actually go in the hole was obviously the one that went in the hole and the one that went past the hole. And this is why we want to establish a good foot pass pace because if you're not going to get it to the hole, you don't give yourself a chance to make the putt. So this is why pace is super important on the putting greens. So essentially that's pretty much all you need to start building better pace. I think when it comes to pace control, it's all about getting better feel. So a lot of people struggle with getting that feel. So you just have to start from the basics. It's not anything complicated. We always want to keep it as simple as possible. And I don't think it gets much more simpler than this. It just, you need to put in the work to get, in order to build that initial feel. And then you're going to be able to base it off that. So I hope this helps and I hope you guys start uh, getting better pace controls on the golf course. Always remember, if you're never up, you're never in.